Carlsbad, people, purpose, and impact, an essential podcast for those who live, work, visit, and play in Carlsbad. Good morning and welcome, everyone. My name is Brett Schonsenbach. I'm the president and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce, and I am your host today. And today, I'm very excited to have with me Elaine Swan, and Elaine is the owner and founder of the Swan School of Protocol. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning. Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. So you have created something pretty special right here in Carlsbad, right? Yes, right here in Carlsbad. And that's, you know, and the thing about it that's so cool is that, you know, folks really recognize me as a thought leader in this industry. And yeah. and I have to say that I am the number one etiquette expert in our country. That's awesome. And I'm right here in Carlsbad. Right here in Carlsbad. <laughs> and, and you've been on hundreds of TV appearances, but maybe not everybody in Carlsbad has had exposure to you yet. Right. That's, that's true, which is amazing because uh, sometimes when I talk to folks, they go, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were right here in our backyard. So yes, yeah. I've had the absolute pleasure to appear here on shows such as Dr. Oz, The Today Show, CNN, Access Hollywood, Inside Edition, Fox News. It just really runs the gamut. And so I I love uh, sharing my advice. And, and often people think etiquette has to do with how you use your fork and your knife at the table. <laughs> yeah, right. But exactly. I mean, there's it's really our, our whole world. You know, when yeah. you think about this, if you ask an individual, well, when is the last time someone said something not so nice to you or you got a really irritated yeah. with the way someone behaved and or, or what have you. And so with that, we can it really does impact our entire world and not just. Are. It, it's yeah. not in that table box. Not just not just table manners. <laughs> no. Oh, that's great. Well, what I'd love to do is to kind of peel back the onion a little bit and find out what led you down this path. Like when you were, you know, probably uh, 15 years old, I'm not sure if you saw yourself as an etiquette expert. What, what got you to here? How did you arrive here? Oh, my goodness. I arrived here by being a student of etiquette. Mm -hmm. And it really started with my mom and my dad. They felt like I needed a little bit of a boost in terms of my self-esteem. I was very, very shy. Mm -hmm. And so many, many years ago, they (laughs) sent me to Sears Charm School. So that's where it kind of started. I know. Sears? Sears Sears and Roebuck. Roebuck? Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) They had a charm school. But then what happened for me, my big shift was when I got involved with pageants. And every pageant I competed in had an etiquette component to it. And that's where I really started to develop the self-esteem that was necessary to kind of navigate my life through this world. And then later on, I became a flight attendant. And so I went through the international etiquette and protocol training at at Continental Airlines. And so I was stuck. I I was just, everything in me was, what was awakened was, you know, decorum and protocol and so forth. I was, that was it for me. Yeah. And so because of my involvement, because of the things that folks had known that I had done in the community, I actually grew up in Oceanside and went Mm -hmm. to El Camino High School. Yep, I saw that. Ah, yes, yes. And so one of the middle school, no, 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 actually was a sorority had asked me to help get girls prepared for a debutante ball. And I said, yeah, sure. And they said, can you do some etiquette training? I was all, yes, oh my goodness, this is right up my alley. And it was a volunteer thing. So I just volunteered and I did that for about five years. And then one of the principals at uh, the middle schools in Oceanside asked if I could do an after-school program. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And she offered to pay me and I took their money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I did the program and it was a great success. And so they brought me back the next semester and then they referred me to another school and another and another. And so then I immediately recognized, okay, this is a business. This is definitely a business. And, And going into business was not foreign to me. At the time when I was a flight attendant, I also owned another business, which was a hair salon which was my second business. And my first business was a model agency, but that's a whole different story in New York City. And so going into business and doing this was not foreign to me. So I closed the hair salon and I opened my etiquette business in June of 2003 and continued to serve 
children doing after school programs. And then eventually I moved into doing speaking engagements and it just grew from there. And we'll just keep talking about that more. But yeah. that's really how it got started. Wow. So if it wasn't for this years of me volunteering yeah. and not getting paid for helping these young girls with their self-esteem and their self-confidence, right. it really would not have turned into a business for me. And so it's it's been so rewarding. That is interesting. So, it, I mean, as a true entrepreneur, it's like a, a need came up and you saw the need and you saw that you had the skills and the know-how to meet that need and boom, Swan's School of Protocol. Yes. So incredible. It's and, fascinating. And, and it, it, it just continued to grow from there because then I thought, okay, well, I, how can I do more of this? Because now I'm I'm at my core. I'm a businesswoman. Yeah. And so I thought, well, you know, how am I going to make more money? So I started to look at the the various ways that I could serve individuals and help them with whatever pain point they were experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I started to tap, tap into everything from working with universities and their students who are graduating and uh, or in their or in a business school and they needed to know how to conduct themselves once they got out into the real world i'm sure. using air quotes as air i quotes, say this yes, you know yes. and um and then of course professional organizations and then various businesses would bring me in and, and work with their staff and so i'm constantly on the hunt for how can i help people solve their problem because of course in business, that's where yeah. your money lies. <laughs> right, right. If you're a, a solution provider, yes. you're going to have opportunity to, exactly. to uh, make money at it. It's quite interesting to hear you refer to yourself as a shy young lady because you have a lot of confidence and you obviously, well, to be on TV as much as you have, but also in all these different arenas. Um, and it seems like one of the purposes of your school is to help people sharpen their speed speaking skills or public appearances. Yes, so talk absolutely. About, yeah, talk about your experience that led you to want to help people with that. Wow, you know, here's the thing. I still, to this day, the shyness is, is not there. I'm not shy, but I am at my core an introvert. Mm. And I have difficulty navigating big social situations. So if I were to be at a first Friday, Friday breakfast on the outside, I look as cool as a cucumber. But on the inside, I'm saying, oh, my gosh, OK. Yeah. It, there's, it's just it's a lot for me. And yeah. I really had to figure out how to get past that and, and get over it. So, again, I'm a consummate student. So many years ago, as I was yeah. starting to really get into developing this business, I was hiding and working from home. And every once in a while, I would go out and do something. But my safe place is at home. Yeah. So I took a course <laughs> on how to network effectively with nice. people. And and so from that, I, I now help others do the same thing. So I understand what it feels like to be in a situation where you feel apprehensive about introducing yourself or engaging in small talk or how to get out of a conversation once you've gotten started. Yes, <laughs> you know, when, that's, that's, a, that's trick. a tough one. It is. I exactly. Agree. So... Everything, you know, that the, remember the commercial, I'm not uh, just a haircut, you know, president, I'm a customer too, or whatever that is. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not, I, I really am a student of my own school of thought. Yeah. And so that's what really helped me to understand. So I have that empathy for folks who mm -hmm. have challenges in that area. And I'm able to recognize whether you work in IT and every once in a while you have to go to a convention and actually talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe you're making a transition from, a rank and file employee and you're going into a, a leadership role or moving into the C-suite and you say, okay, I've got to get up into, in front of folks and I have to lead effectively and I have to share. Here's the thing that I often say to individuals. There's a difference between feeling comfortable and appearing confident. You're not always going to feel comfortable, but I help people feel confident. I help people appear Peer confident. confident. Regardless of how they're feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Put all that aside. And so as long as you can look that way on the outside and you can navigate and you can move. And, and a lot of times if we have the skills and we have the tools and we know exactly what to do in a given social situation, yeah. there there goes the appearance of confidence. And then all the other stuff is to the side. The rest of it, you can just let your own light shine. Yeah, that's interesting. You, you mentioned um, how... On the inside, you could feel in a large, like, say, networking forum. Um, and I've been there myself, you know, the same. And one of the things I, I like to do at our 
chamber happy hours because I've been that new person who is the first timer. And you see these people who are seem like they've known each other for a hundred years, just having this grand old conversation. And you're like, how do I break in? So at the happy hours, every time, one of the things I do is um, I challenge everybody because they people come to a happy hour to expand their network of contacts. But the first thing we do is gravitate to somebody we already (laughs) know. Exactly, exactly. That's that's safe. I know that person. So I always, um, and I learned this from somebody years ago, but I always script out and say, okay, you came here to meet new people. This is your time to go up to perfect strangers and say, hi, my name is. And then I also tell them that they have to learn something personal about them, not just get a business card. But, you know, we try to create a an atmosphere where it's okay to meet new people and yes. and and force them to kind of get out of that comfort zone of just gravitating to the person to the they person already know. They know. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that that happens with folks when you go to somewhere and you know you have to network with people is you're thinking about the entire event and all of the folks who are there. And so when I work with individuals, I tell them, don't think from that perspective. Think smaller. Think, you know what, I'm going to go to this event and I'm going to put forth an effort to connect with two or three really solid individuals. I'm not going to put so much weight on myself. And then this way, the burden is lighter. You feel as though, okay, I don't have to get to know every person who's here because that's overwhelming. But if I just put forth the effort to make two or three really good, solid connections, and I say use kind of the 510 rule, meaning if you connect or you meet eyes with someone who's about 10 feet away, you don't even have to speak to them. You can just nod and smile and keep it stepping. But if they're within five feet, then that's when you should stop. If your eyes meet and you're five feet, then you can stop and say hello and introduce yourself and then go from there. That's so a it's great, less, yeah, it's less intimidating. Rule. Yeah, 510 yeah, rule. I like that um, that kind of guideline to help people, um, you know, give them a little parameters on what's when's a good place to jump in and when's a good place to stay back. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, <laughs> because when we go to events, we're there to network and get to know people. And as you mentioned, folks are connected and it looks yeah. like they're it's a high school reunion and everyone forgot about who you are. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh my goodness, I see that name tag. I really want to talk to that person. How do I enter into this yeah. conversation? And those are the things, those are the tools and the tricks and the, and yeah. the hacks that, that I share in my Love courses. It. Love it. So you mentioned, of course, that you have corporate clients and, and some of the iterations of that. But you also brought up what a formative thing for you being involved in pageants was. And so it looked like on your website, that's still some clientele that you do work with. It is, yes. Uh, I am the official interview coach for the Miss America. Well, I'm sorry, for Miss California, which is part of the Miss America organization. And then I also help prepare the winner, Miss California, to for her to compete with Miss America. Yeah, so it's really great. And then also I work with the Miss Filipina International Pageant as well. So a lot of pageant systems will bring me in and have me coach and work with their folks who, in the area of interview, because I'm interviewed, I take all my skills and I'm interviewed often. And so it's the same sort of thing. We're preparing them for that particular job. And in addition to that, there are some instances where I will take some one-on-one clients uh, to help them, but that's at a, another level and a very nice investment for them. <laughs> sure. And that's great, though. I My previous chamber, um, we had various teen and, and um, you know, young adult pageants that that existed. And so a lot of the, the gals would come to our events. Oh, and, yes. And yes. it was a great experience for them. It is. You know, to, to come and mix with business professionals and be involved and engage them and It is. And, you know, they all have their platform, which is something that they that's near and dear to their heart that they have to talk about. And there's some instances where they'll have to be interviewed about it or or speak to a room and and share. And so that speaking element is very, very crucial to their, their 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 role as a title holder. We are going to take a short break. We've been talking to Elaine Swan from the Swan School of Protocol. We're going to give a chance for our sponsor to share a little bit, and we'll be right back. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to deal with people after COVID. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. So Elaine, I was on your... I was on your website and you have some pretty interesting content and I this one just really caught my eye 
because one of your email lists is um, how to deal with people after COVID restrictions have been lifted. And, you know, I found that that was trickier than I initially thought it would be. And so I'd love to hear your kind of take on what led you to create that and and some of your content around that. Wow. The key is the minute COVID hit our shores, well, not the minute, but the, once we really started talking about it, and this was very early 2020, yes. uh, fe- February, March, yeah. it really, I started getting calls from a variety of media outlets saying, what do we do? Because they're telling us not to shake hands. How do you handle this? And it went from that to I, I spent so much of 2020 doing research and study and then sharing this information with the world to help them navigate because things were shifting constantly. We went from, should we fist bump? Remember when that was yeah. really cute and we thought that was funny? Yeah. And then all of a sudden we couldn't be next to each other. We needed to stay far apart. How do you tell someone to step back? And then we started to get into the holiday season where people were wanting to spend time with family members, but they couldn't. Uh, Unfortunately, there were uh, lots of deaths. And so we had virtual funerals and virtual weddings and all of this. And so with all of that, I was just a machine cranking out information and tips and advice on how we could navigate this situation. And so now we are, here we are coming into the tail end of it and things are being lifted and restrictions are being lifted, but there's still some guidelines that have to be followed. One thing that stands out incredibly is the fact that now we're dealing with the vaccine. And typically in a real world, we wouldn't really ask someone about their health status and what they're doing and whether or not they've done taking a a vaccine for anything that's just it was gauche it's not something we would but now it's it's a standard that's on some registration forms for events and so to ask how did this come about is you know this is the world that we live in and that's what makes the work that i do personally very very unique because uh I really put forth the greatest effort to make sure that the information I share is very relevant to our time so that we're really helping people. I'm not teaching you how to curtsy and which fork to news, but I'm really helping people out of difficult situations. So with that being said, now that we're starting to get back into the workplace, the holidays are coming soon. We're going to be interacting with people in a whole different way this year than we were last year. Yeah, for sure. Now folks are saying, I'd rather you not attend because of whatever my particular standard is. I prefer to not have mask and you do. And, and I I don't want that here at my event. I'd or vice versa. versa. I I prefer to only have folks here who are fully vaxxed. And, you know, so, so now people are saying, and this is what makes me feel so hopeful about our world is folks are saying, Elaine, how do I do this without hurting someone's feelings? How do I do this but still keep the relationship intact? And that's where I come in to help folks really give them very specific words and phrases to share so that you can get that information out of an individual. For example, rather than having a conversation with your friend and saying, are you vaccinated? Now I've got my defense up. I don't know if you're going to accept my response. That's very different than saying, well, how do you feel about the vaccine? Now the person can share their heart. They can share whatever it is they 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 have to, to say. They feel like it's a safe space. So that's a lot different. So these are the types of things that I'm sharing with folks. Uh, when when you greet someone, are we shaking hands? Are we hugging? So then you ask. All right, just ask the person. Are you shaking hands yet? And if they say no keep the conversation going. Don't sit and yeah. drill them and ask them why and tell them why you think it's okay. And all they say, no, okay, great. So glad to see you. Oh my gosh, how's life? This and that. Keep the conversation going. I say pivot. Like, you know, politicians yeah. are really great at pivoting in conversations. So follow that lead and just pivot and keep the conversation going in another direction. So right now I am on my, you know, <laughs> proverbial soapbox trying to help individuals navigate this because it can be challenging. And the goal is to make sure that on the other end of all of this, that our relationships, relationships are intact. intact. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's so important. That's great. My um, wife and I just spent uh, five days in New York City and 
it's a very different experience there than it is here in terms of being out in public. And we had done our research, so we were prepared, but you know, um, 75% of the restaurants and all the entertainment places, like we went to a couple plays, we went to the Empire State Building, you had to show your driver's license ID and your vaccination card wow. simultaneously to get in the door. Or you weren't, oh my word. you were being screened at the door. You weren't getting in without that. And so it's so different than here, you know, um, where, I mean, we have a pretty high level of vaccination here in San Diego County, and which is, you know, a blessing in terms of the diseases going down, which yes. is good, but people don't, you're they not don't, forced to show forced that to show, anywhere, yeah. you know? And yeah. Well, I was, <laughs> I spent a few days in Texas last mm. month mm. and I went there and it would appear as though the vaccine, you know, not the vaccine, the, the pandemic never happened. Never even happened. <laughs> yeah. And so here I am, I'm walking into places with my mask on. Yeah. Because I'm in California, where you know I'm kind of used to it, and so forth, and uh, it wasn't required, and yeah. and and then even you know some in some instances it may have been frowned upon. So as we travel through our country, it can be very very different, yeah. and that's what's going to happen during the holiday season. Yeah. You'll have relatives that are coming from here and there, and and so forth. I had a friend that sent me an invitation to her holiday party. And on there, she gave her stipulations to say, we prefer for folks to be fully vaxxed. And if you're not, then we'll have to not have you come. And if, if you do come, oh, fully vaxxed, and you have to have your COVID test within 24, 78, I don't know, whatever the time yeah. frame. That was her stipulation. It was on the invitation. Wow. So I, you know, posted it on Twitter and then shared it on another, on, on, on Instagram and said, what do you all think about this? And I tell you, folks really were very passionate wow. about that particular topic. <laughs> I and bet. not a lot of people saw, saw Ida. I actually had to step back and just let them fight it out all <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. And that's the key is we have to, our core values of etiquette that I often say, they're respect, honesty, and consideration. And the key is regardless of what someone says, thinks, or believes, we still have to respect their position. That's the key that in terms of us living together in perfect harmony and from the pageant world, world peace. <laughs> no doubt. You have another topic on your website that hit home for me, and it was about dealing with uh, planning a wedding post-COVID. My One of my sons um, got married last Christmas, and he and his wife, his wife's his wife's from North Dakota, which is where they met at college. And so the wedding was in North Dakota. And so uh, we were there. It was literally, I think it was three days after Christmas um, last year. And, you know, they had to take their reception and they got to have a reception, which was wonderful, but they had to break it into two. Oh. And so you came to the first part of the reception and then they had like a, maybe like a, what was it, a 20 minute or a half hour break because they had to clean all the table, bust all the tables, reset it back up. And then the next group got to come in for phase two of the reception. And, and of course the wedding party and the family was there for both parts, but you know, it was just. And what happened in these different, what, 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 what well, I mean, was... basically they replicated pretty much everything for the two different groups. You know, they had the. What were the groups? They, oh, meaning like vaxxed and unvaxxed? Or... No, 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 just you were in shifts so they could spread out, so they could oh. reduce the overall numbers and just keep the volume, you know, manageable, so to speak. And, oh. And, um, and that, you know, made it work for the venue at that time. But, you know, it was just, it was just unique. Wow. Oh, yes. You know, they, my son, who, uh, while he was in college, one of the, you know, side hustles he was doing, he was, he became a DJ. Okay. And so he had this whole idea in his mind about, you know, the, the party and the dancing, well, the dancing had to be canceled completely oh, at that time in there. Yeah, so, yeah. so that was a little bit of a bummer, but you know, it's, yeah. it, it was still a great celebration. They're married. They're yes, happy. Yes, but it's all about yeah. But you know, golly, I'm sure. Wow. I'm sure you're dealing with a lot of yeah. Changes. Uh, there's quite a bit. Yeah, a lot of changes that because people were having uh, are are having still we're seeing virtual weddings or either a hybrid of both. And folks want to know well, 
for the virtual wedding, do, number one, do I still have to send a gift? Uh, how do I dress for the, yeah, if I'm watching that's interesting. <laughs> online? Uh, and, and, and so on and so on and so on, you know, and, and how do you, here's the key too, how do you invite someone and then uninvite them, right? Whether they're in a bridal party or in the family or a guest or what have you, because of whatever your stipulations are. And so I really help folks get yeah. out of that <laughs> and there's, navigate that. There's a lot of interesting etiquette situations that, that you've helped people think through, right? And that you're prepared to help people think through. Um, so let's let's share about this. You have three books so far. Uh, I'll say so far because uh, I have a feeling there could be more. But um, I would love for you to share with our audience a little bit about one of them that just totally caught my eye called Let Crazy Be Crazy. <laughs> so share about that book. I knew you were going to say that one. So this book, Let Crazy Be Crazy, and I'm sorry to interrupt you with my laughter, but yes, Let Crazy Be Crazy is a book. I wrote this book to help people deal with difficult people and challenging situations. I often get questions from folks on how to deal with with crazy folk, right? Yeah, yeah. And what to do, everything from whether it's the holiday season and you have a relative that either misbehaves or maybe they say something negative to you every single time you see them, or perhaps you have an individual in your workplace or within your volunteer organization that is difficult and resistant and 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 rude. How but you still have to work with them. How do you navigate this? And so I wrote this book with 36 really, really great short tips on how to deal with folks. For example, one of my th- uh, tips is if you have to confront someone. Let's say, for example, you have to confront someone. We don't like doing it. Most of us don't like confrontation. And we start thinking about how do I do this? How do I approach it? So one of my tips is to leave out the icky and keep the matter of fact. And because sometimes if we have to confront someone, we're thinking about all of these things, this laundry list of stuff that we need to bring to their attention. When when you really take your time and sit down and think it through, you can narrow it down to just a handful of things or three major things to where you say, this is something that I need to shift, but always think from the perspective of resolution. I'm going to this person, I'm sharing this information because I want to resolve it. And and I'm not going to just say, you do this all the time and then stand there with my hands on my hips and wait. I'm going to say, you know, when you do this, this is how it makes me feel. How about we do it this way? Or what can we do to make? So think resolution. So when you start thinking about how are we going to resolve whatever it is, and you've got this laundry list of stuff, after a while you start thinking, well, you know what? That's crazy. I can't fix that. And they're not going to fix it. They're not going to change. I'm going to leave that alone. Let me just focus on the things that I know are are impacting me. So if it's your fellow coworker, and there's something that they're doing that's that that that's preventing you from getting your job done, focus merely on that as opposed to all of this other stuff. Nice. Yes. Nice. Very good. So. Um... So what's next? What's next for oh, the Swan goodness. School Protocol? Oh my goodness! So there's there's a there's a next, and then which is just incredible, great stuff. Um, but the stuff that we have going on right now, which is really really a lot of fun. The 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 one thing that we have that's coming up right now is our cotillion and junior cotillion for our young folks. We have instructors, incredible instructors at our location here in Carlsbad that are great with our kids. And we have a school year long program that is so incredible. Cause I told you we did the after school program. That's something that I did, but we did this taking that whole thing. Cause I was helping with those debutantes. Right. And then the after school program concept, and we put that all together. And so cotillion is a school year long program where the students meet once a month and we're going over skills that they need to help them in their everyday life and beyond. A lot of times parents, especially after the pandemic right now, parents are saying, I really would like for my kid to be able to communicate effectively. We're not just focusing on table manners. Uh, Talking to adults is so important. Really putting down some of those devices and engaging in small talk and how to do these sort of things. And then working with individuals that they don't know. Sometimes we have folks who are in our bubble because we've all been in a bubble, especially more recently. But the great thing is the kids, they come together 
And they have a full project that they're working on for the entire school, which is their actual culmination event. So they're working on that collectively the same way you would if you were in a work environment. Everyone has the same goal. Everyone has different roles. And you have to get along. And you have to figure it out and make it happen. So we teach all of the skills that you need to socialize and work with other folks and apply it and put it in this in, in our program. So it's very unique. Most folks think Cotillion is the dancing and so yeah. forth. And, and we will have that because that's a nice social aspect sure. of of respect and leading and following and that sort of thing. So that's fun. But we really, really are making sure that we're creating an an environment for these young people to grow and be great human beings, you know, tapping into that emotional intelligence that's so, so necessary, most especially in today's world. So that's what we have going on, which is exciting. We just had our very, very first meeting last month. We have uh, the second one is now. We do have a couple little spots still available. So anyone want that? We'd love to have them. One of the things that I do want to share that we have done, which is really, really great, is when you talk about a problem to solve. Because of my notoriety as an etiquette professional and being on television, I kept getting three types of questions from people throughout the United States. Can you mentor me? Do you have a curriculum I can purchase? And can you come to my city and do a workshop? They had a budget, but not enough to fly me out there and put me in a hotel and all that. So with that, I took about two years to figure out what I could do to serve folks in this way and came up with a licensing program. So now what we do is we certify individuals and license them so they too can operate as a Swan School of Protocol. And we launched it in November of 2017, and we have over 20 independently owned and operated Swan Schools throughout the country. So it's really great because individuals now, they're, they're, they're mostly women, all women, they have a small business that they're running from their home. They have the freedom to create their own schedule. They're making an impact on their community and they're making money. And so it's really, really great, especially now with this whole exodus <laughs> of folks leaving their jobs. And so we really want to be of service to individuals, especially teachers who are saying, you know what, I want to do something else. Why not teach in this area? So that's what's really, we're so excited about continuing to expand in this area to help individuals take that power back and have the freedom to work their own schedule and make money, but then still have a great impact in their community. That's wonderful. So somebody who's hearing about this for the first time is excited. How do they get connected to you? How do they get in touch with you? Oh, sure. Just visit my website, swanschool.com, and swan is spelled with two N's. So it's swanschool.com. Swanschool.com, two N's on swan. And then they can find out about your resources, your books, your um, licensing yes. program if they wanted to start a swan school somewhere. Yes. That's and amazing. the thing that's great about it is the focus is really on your network. Because everyone has a network of people. So even if you have two folks in the same area, you don't all know the same people. You don't all serve the same people. And the great thing is we certify folks so that they can teach children, teens, college students, and adults. So it really just depends on who you want to serve. That's great. So they have a, um, you know, depending on where they feel comfortable or their sweet spot is, they can dive in. Yes. And we hold their hand the entire time. It's a full-on business in a box. So we throw the whole kitchen sink at it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come down and share your passion and share about um, your opportunities and everything. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on our Carlsbad People, Purpose, and Impact podcast today. If you enjoyed it, please hit the follow button on wherever you get your audio. And please tell a friend. We would love to hear your feedback, which you can share at carlsbadpodcast.com. You can leave us a review, ask a question, or leave an audio comment, which we can play on the show in the future. And that's all we have for today. Can't wait to see you next time on Carlsbad, People, Purpose, and Impact. And remember, share some kindness today. It's free, creates goodwill, and makes you feel great.